time for another video. Today, I'm quite excited for your video. In fact, I think I'm so excited that I'm gonna release this uh, ahead of others that I have already done because I am correcting a really big mistake, okay? A really big mistake. And this is one of those jigs that I should have featured before, okay? When I first started because it, it's like the stuff for legends, okay? And it's really one of the very first jigs that got popular, not because it is a, uh, what do you call this? Not because it was widely di distributed, okay? But because this thing really works. And the only hard thing, okay, I think for in some areas you could still find this jig or at least copies of it, but what you cannot find is actually the smaller versions of these jigs, which have always been kind of difficult to find. I know I have a few of these in 10 grams, okay? And then I found 30s and 60s. So I have a very good excuse to actually just kind of uh, copy them because they're not widely available anymore. So that's kind of like one of the things that I'm excited about. But I'm going to show you this, okay? And mind you, these are used jigs. Um, I think one is kind of, yeah, one is new and one is used. So I'm going to use this one right here to show you this is a Yozuri metallic sardine as you can see there's a lot of damage on that thing so I'm not faking it okay so this the metallic sardine from Yozuri in the 30 gram is devastating this is something that I could use for offshore here here in Dubai or casting from the shore and as you can see the size of this is just perfect Okay, the, the profile is like a small sardine, which is really any any fish would eat. Okay, and then this is the 60 gram right here. And this is like a, a whoa. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to edit this out. This is kind of stupid. <laughs> okay, so this is like a later version of this uh, jig as you can see that's how much i use these things so i'm i'm honestly this is this is one of the uh, the later version colors okay of this particular jig and uh this is the 60 gram version which is which is great because you know what this is something i could use on the boat and uh yeah so it, it has a texture to it too so it's not like the uh the old ones that you know has a laser strip and this is the original color scheme and then later on they came out with stuff like this all right <laughs> so the metallic sardine is really unfortunately um largely uh the uh, smaller versions the smaller sizes have been um discontinued which is very unfortunate because the smaller sizes were the ones that actually really was for me was really kicking butt now as for the bigger sizes well i used the 300 gram version to fish in the philippines uh in 2010 okay so very early on 2010 and i won't forget this because i think hold on no 2008 not 2010 2008 hold on kales when were you born? May 6, 2010. Okay, so, so her birthday is 2010, which means that this happened at uh, 2008. So 2008, went home to the Philippines, used uh, a 300 gram version of this to catch uh, two coral trout. And uh, that was one of the, uh, the trips, or yeah actually the only trip that I had with my dad um, and I, I'm gonna show a picture here of me and my dad but we caught this coral trout uh, on a metallic sardine okay so um, these things these things work these things work and if if there is such a thing as a uh, an all-around jig more than likely you would have a picture of this okay beside that word or that that phrase multi-purpose jig so 
basically um, it flutters a lot okay or you can make it even flutter a lot and we're gonna talk about that later uh, rigging it is very simple and very straightforward there's several ways to rig this but for now what we're gonna do is actually I'm gonna show you the the different ways of rigging that I use for this particular jig now in this day and age okay where there's a lot of fancy stuff what can you do to make it even a bit more attractive okay so to add a bit more of flash and uh, complexity to this lure because remember that you cast this out you reel it in it swims and when you stop it flutters okay uh, to slow the flutter down even more get you one of these or you can make them and I can I have a video of how to make these okay I have a video of how to make these and uh, I think I'll, I'm gonna link it right now uh, or I'll, I'll link it at the, towards the very end so that you can see you can watch this whole video get to the end see the link and then you know you can you can DIY one of these so this for this particular size this is the uh, 30 gram a number six treble hook fits really well okay I'm not gonna open this because it's kind of like you know pretty straightforward now if you have one of these and you just want to uh, and by the way how you size it is just go like that you can see that sticks out just a bit okay that's how you size it you see you go to the widest part of the jig okay just there you can see that it sticks out a little bit the widest part that's the size of your of your uh, treble right there so with that treble hook it gives it a little bit of flash a little bit of uh, more vibration because of the uh, the spinner blade obviously the plain one that you could do is just a treble hook okay and then uh, the uh, addition of hair or flash would give it a little bit of extra but that's like very simplistic now um, what if you want something that holds fish more okay and by the way before this video I actually had this installed in this particular jig so let me put it back okay I didn't expect to put it back but uh, just to show you because I want transparency and all that because this is what I have been catching fish on and I just want to show you guys because I don't want to gatekeep things it's you know no, especially with this sort of thing it's kind of stupid all right so here we go you see that a single inline hook again if you check this out how I sized it uh, just for your reference I honestly I don't know the number uh, the size hook this is uh, probably like 1-0 or something but look okay see see that so you put it on the widest part and there you see just a tad sticking out and that is a very good sized hook for this it matches okay so that was that all right that was that it's that simple pretty straight freaking forward okay boom just like that and that has actually caught a lot for me okay uh, that was just casting straight casting I wasn't jigging it or anything and I wasn't letting it fall to the bottom basically I was targeting kingfish with that and uh, highly successful what if you want to use it for jigging now remember the cast the, the metallic sardine initially it was a lure developed or a jig developed for uh, th this at this point in time when it was developed it was a time when things weren't very specific there were a lot of uh, tin squids from the US uh, as, as they were called um, diamond jigs 
which are basically, I don't know, you Google diamond jigs, you can see it. That, uh, and there weren't really a lot of swimming or fluttering jigs except for spoons and stuff. So this is when it was born. So, you know, it was it, it was kind of like a generalistic sort of thing. Now, now uh, later on, I think uh, contemporary for this would be like the P-line jigs. This was when these jigs were actually marketed. Together with this was the Blanca, the Blanca jig. Okay, now if you don't know what the Blanca jig is, which is another jig that's uh, kind of a favorite of mine. This is a Yozuri Blanca. Okay, so that's a... That's a Yozuri Blanca right there. So, these are contemporaries. The Blanca is still around. The tail, we are going to put a... Uh, a hook there later okay and we're gonna do something kind of different with it uh, okay so this is another hook that's actually uh, good for it but this is a uh, thin thin hook and uh, that's what we're gonna use came from here <laughs> all right so the thing that we're gonna change is that I believe these uh, split rings are way too thick for these so I'm gonna get rid of that and what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie uh, not flash okay mind you not flash or maybe we should tie flash, huh? All right, you've convinced me. Let's tie flash, okay? Because uh, if you see, the pink is just there. That's it, and we want more pink, right? So let's do that. Now for this, I'm gonna use my red thread. This is fishing braid for those that I, that's like one of the questions I keep on getting asked. What are you using to tie these? I tie with fishing braid this is two pound Japanese two pound okay this is very thin now I'm gonna zoom you in so that you see better okay there we go right there okay now we're gonna use flashable now the flashaboo that we're gonna use, uh, this is kind of like the excess length from uh, jigs we used or uh, flashaboo we used for YLS jigs, kind of like an excess length. So we want that much. That's it. And if you can see, we're tying on the upper side of the hook here, where the point is at. Now uh, there's always a concern for. Uh, ratios of the material so I'm just lucky that this actually when I uh, grabbed it was just right okay but you should put you should put just enough of the uh, material don't put too much uh, how how much exactly is uh, there's there's no formula to it okay uh, especially when you're tying flies you actually just realize that there's no count you can't say 50 strands of this or whatnot it's all by feel so it's kind of just like experience dictates whatever you're putting on the uh, or however much you're putting so I'm just gonna put like a little bit now as you can see I tied from this side okay but I know that when I when I wind this some materials are gonna transfer and as you can see there bang okay it is perfectly centered again this is from experience because uh, when you're handling materials after a long time you kind of notice uh, they have habits they actually have habits and when you're tying on this this side here the clo closest to me once you keep on uh, winding forward the materials actually kind of stack on each other and then roll and that's what happened here so if you actually kind of uh, 
rewind a little bit and see exactly where I tied it. I tied it near near uh, the, the side nearest to me and then once I uh, wrap you'll see that the material actually just goes around like that. So again fly tying. Okay so from there we just finish this. Why did we do this? Okay so I'm pretty sure some are asking instead of actually putting it on the side right this this uh this side right here but see the thing is <clears throat> when this falls this becomes a parachute and this hook would always be right side up and we are putting it here on the back okay so that's uh that's our back hook and what i want is for it to always be upright because fish's mouth like that okay this is the one that moves. This part doesn't move. Okay? This is mostly bone here. Okay? Where is mostly bone? But if your hooks actually penetrate the upper lip, let's say here, okay? It's a much more uh it's a better hold than actually here on the bottom because in the bottom part it's actually quite soft except for the jaw structure. But if you're hooking the fish and this part right here near the throat actually kind of gets ripped okay but on top here it won't because most of its bone and the the palate and the sides here the skin okay once it once it hits something there it's just more of a secure hold at least that's for me if you think it's something different for you more power go for it all right so that's it right now if you want your hooks to always point down you put it here that's it okay cuz the drag will force the hook to either go like that or like that the drag of the uh, the flash okay the flash or hair it depends so right that and irregardless of the position of this this would always point up it won't twist down you know because this will keep it from moving. We will put an appropriate appropriate sized split ring. And as it is, believe it or not, like right now, you can use it. And, uh, alright, that's it for the video. <laughs> no. Alright, so that's it. Now, for casting, this will do absurdly well. For casting, that's it. All right, for casting, you could stop there. But if you're shore jigging, you're casting and you're jigging, okay, this is what we do. Uh, and it's a single hook configuration. So let's let's actually look for a suitable solid ring to start with. Okay. Just this one it's tiny all right so and uh, split ring right here I don't know the numbers okay uh, here this is how I judge it all right so you can see if it's uh if it's a little bit bigger a tad bigger that's fine this one's a bit too big actually uh, if you're matching the size of the eye of the jig you're in good shape right there okay so see that if you're matching the eye you're in good shape so we are going to put this on and then after that we're just gonna worry about the rigging of the the rigging of the single hook that we're gonna put in okay there we go all right for our uh, <clears throat> hook we are using a uh, SJ 38 SJ 38 from owner that's a 1-0 okay so again you can see that that's how I size it right there just a tad sticking out okay from the back straight right there all right uh, and then now 
our assist cord. So we can easily just loop this on a uh, solid ring and then call it a day. But we're not lazy. That's A and B. Uh, we could do better. Okay, so loop, loop twice. Okay, loop twice. Okay, so we looped it twice. So the line basically goes around the hook or around the solid ring two times, like so. Okay, now I'll give you a better view. Okay, so you see that? That's looped twice. Now, what we do, take this off so it's easier. All right, what we do is we form a, uh, a V with our fingers here. Okay, like that. All right, separate that and then twist. You could do clockwise, you could do counterclockwise. It depends on uh, what weed you smoke. <laughs> you know, or how your uh, stomach actually churns whichever way okay so the most important thing here is that you turn this and you actually pull and this keeps a steady tension on that thing and you don't want this thing to unravel alrighty just like that I could be lazy and just loop it done deal alright but uh, we don't do it Right, because uh, you know we uh, grew up, we grew up not uh, eating glue, so we do it the right way. Right, so make a uh, an overhand there, and uh, tighten it as tight as you can, so this thing doesn't unravel on you. There we go. So that's I think that's as far in as we can. So uh, we can zoom in. So what I want here is to really just pull that. And it's difficult. See, with the knot, it's kind of difficult to uh, bring that in. Now, all we want is a single, a single overhand right there. Okay. And then we measure. Okay, so we want to be somewhere there. So pull that and we can see. There we go, that's perfect. Now, all you need to do is just really tighten this thing. Okay, since this is gonna be a fast jig, guess what? Kinda doesn't matter where you put your flash. Cause guess what? We're gonna put flash, baby. All right, so there we go. Now. Okay, you see that? That is clean as hell. Now, uh, pink? Shall we? Shall we use pink? Is it pink? Mm, or are we gonna counter contrast? Let's use pink, cause uh, you know it's it's already there. Uh, and of all things, it got buried. All that junk. All right, so here we go. You see, I cut the excess on this right here. So now we have to actually pick out a few from here. Okay, so we are going to take just a tad. Okay, because this is a shore jig and we don't want this to get too flashy. Okay, normally a lot of people actually use uh, flashable on this, that's fine too, but. Sorry, crystal flash, not flashable. This is flashable, but we have flashable. Okay, so we're gonna use it. Okay, so there. Now, actually, we can still fold this. Alrighty, fold this that length. All right, or that much. Now, set this aside. Okay, set this aside. 
Okay, then now we're gonna tie our line or our assist cord. Now when we're doing this, okay, what happens is that since we're tying it here, it will stop the cord from unraveling or and untwisting itself. Okay, man, this is a long ass video. But guess what? Uh that's fine. Because, uh, something important. Now, if you guys, if you guys actually, act, if you guys actually have a few of these lying around, good for you. If not, I guess eBay would have them, or there's, uh, other ways to get them, I guess. Alright. Cut that thing! Now, when you cut that thing, actually, that end, it's uh, you've bound this part already, so that's not going to move. Alrighty. So, that's it. Like that. Now, even without completing that, what we could do is actually take our flash. Okay. Fold it. Like so. Uh, make sure it's in the middle. Right there. Okay. And then, just... Again, look at that. I'm tying it on my side. And then, as soon as I roll it around, bang, it's miraculously on top. How is that for material handling? Okay, there we go. Adjust it, and it's perfectly on top. Now, it's just a matter of actually doing a really good job, which, because it's tiny, is not easy. So going around that shank without even without able without being able to you know just really go around the uh, shank of the hook as uh, far back as you can is uh, very difficult at least for me uh, sausage fingers alrighty so there we go now um, is that sharp all right it is huh. So now, all you have to do is just make sure that everything is secure and clean. Alright, so a few more turns here so that we can say that, there you go. There we go. See? Super clean. There's a gap there. Which we need to eliminate. Alrighty. And then another one there. Actually looking at the monitor while I do that. Uh, okay. King is uh, teasing Strider. <laughs> okay. So we close it. Obviously, you need to glue that bit. I'm not gonna do that now because I glue in batches. But I've shown how I glue these things hundreds of times. Alrighty, there we go. So now all we need to do is just straighten, straighten this end right here so that it's clean. Okay. So all you have to do is just take your finger. Okay, take it there, like so, and then cut. There we go. And if there are stragglers, boom, just like that. There, you can see that it's clean. And, uh, okay, there's one there. <laughs> just a single one, amazing. Okay. There we go. Oh, it's still there. There we go. Okay, so that's even. Even, Steven. Clean. Righty. Now. It's tiny. So you can see, tiny. Alright, so. Bang. Just like that. Let's take our uh, pliers here. There we go.
bang just like that and you have one of the cleanest rigs just like that baby and that is ready for casting and general shore jigging really and uh, yeah look at that that is clean yeah okay, for the thumbnail for the thumbnail right there <laughs> all right I'll probably cover my face a bit more like that I'm gonna make a habit out of that you, you just you guys just have to live with it but I'm really gonna make a habit out of that but I'm so happy to have found this and uh, this for uh, offshore applications and there's so much we could do with this honestly there's so much we could do with this especially um, this this particular jig seriously is like just one of the one of the uh, the gems from earlier on in the days and and a lot of people probably didn't really pay attention or much attention to these guys but if just if you have a way to get them okay don't hesitate right so yozuri metallic sardine uh there we go hide the face for the thumbnail alrighty here we go that rig is gold baby and I can't wait to uh, use this in the next outing because uh, the next outing 100% I'm gonna be using um, shore jigging gear I miss fishing shore jigging I also miss fishing with bait but anyway that's it if you have questions go ahead and drop them in the comment section I really hope you uh, learn from this and if you have give it a thumbs up alrighty and uh, share this video with your friends if you want them to uh, to learn with you very very important because you don't want to be stuck explaining all the crap to your friends <laughs> uh, but yeah I mean share it okay uh, it really helps the channel obviously if you're sharing it it's uh, the whole YouTube thing uh, watch it with your friends of course uh, and if you haven't yet and you want to learn more of these things subscribe okay so for you guys that don't know this channel this channel talks about the hows and whys of fishing we cover everything from big game ultralight everything in the middle including fly fishing and a lot of jigging <laughs> alrighty so these days it has been that and uh, if you guy if you are one of those guys that are into micro uh, jigging uh yeah i have taken kind of in the back seat but i promise to actually make more videos for these uh, little things anyway that's it for now thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one class is missed